Anna de Fala Malta Network. Que fa a fangol. Welcome to a special Foul Mouth Network preview. Foul Play. The Last Dawn and the American Mafia. Here's your host, Mr. Cuddy Chris, the one and only Lucky Low and Foul Mouth Ken. Kefa. Kabafango. Ah, uh, Bafangul at a mum, but uh, All right, let's stop. Up tonight. Yeah, man, it's a little bit of a little bit of a cool preview. I'm uh, we're psyched about doing this show. Yeah, uh, the Gotti movie is coming out this Friday. John Travolta plays Gotti. Um, Great actor. It's gonna be a big film. Um, uh, I guess you know it comes out this Friday. So, and Travolta apparently pulled a John Candy. In the sense of he, I mean, a, yeah, a, not a John Candy, a Jim Carrey. Sorry, oh, I was gonna say he pulled a Jim right. Carrey, John Candy. <laughs> oh he pulled a God. fat fuck. No, uh, he he actually pulled a Jim Carrey, and he like stayed in character, and really, really just really honed in on the character of John Gotti in this movie coming up. And they they're saying that he's gonna win an Academy Award and blah blah blah. So there's a lot of hype going into this film coming out on Friday. This guy's a legend. Um, if you lived in America and you're, you know, 25, somewhere in that age, you remember this guy Don, uh, John Gotti um, took over basically the whole entire mob with one hit. Long Don. And um, if you, especially if you lived in America, you know who he is. And if you lived in New York, you definitely know who he is because. All of us in New York have seen the paper articles and the, uh, you know, all the news and and all the shit that has you know has happened with him over this the years. This guy got and, out of jail so many times. Well, that's why they call him the Teflon Don. Teflon. He beat he beat three cases in a row like it was nothing. And on the fourth case, the government knew they had to get his lawyer away from him. So what they did was they concocted this plan to say that the lawyer might come up in some of the questioning in the up and coming case. So his lawyers were banned from being there for him on his fourth case, which he winded up losing and going to jail and dying in jail, uh, jail years later. That's right. Um, but he was untouchable, man. He was, uh, he was the last Don. He really was the last Don in New York and uh, are in the mob really anywhere. Cause it's just not like it used to be. I mean, right. it still well, does exist, you know, but whether you're of Italian descent or not, I feel like everybody knows about Gotti. You know, yeah. he's an interesting character. I mean, it's, yeah, he had that well, crazy personality. He was out there. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and a lot of people, a lot of real mob—not that he wasn't a real mobster, but a lot of mobsters didn't like him. No, not at they all. They say he was technically the one who actually he flaunted it, brought down the. Mob. Yeah, he flaunted it too much. They said he he made it look like it was something of being a celebrity. Right, he um, wasn't hidden it at that point. But right. but open. you want to know something that that segues us into. What we're going to be talking about today, and it's definitely John Gotti, but the American Mafia in, in general, and we're going to go back to where it all started. We're going to take you down that road if you don't know it. If you do, come and hang out with us, and uh, we're going to go down the road of the American mob and how it formed, you know, and what it was uh, by the time a guy like John Gotti was the don of the whole entire thing, and what it is today um, with the opening of this movie coming out this Friday, uh, starring John Travolta. Who is very much um, Italian, knows that whole scene, has, I don't think he's lived it, but I'm sure he's, he definitely knows about it. So, I mean, and, and he really enthralled himself into this role. That's what a lot of people are saying, that he really just lived the character of John Gotti. Well, um, and also his, his wife played his, his, Gotti's wife in the movie, so I read a, Thing where they were they were talking you know like all Italian and everything at the house yeah you know yeah well let's go back to how it all began I mean as far as in Sicily um, they were poor and treated like shit basically so yeah. they would form these groups these clans to fight back uh, the government yeah right and and so, don't forget and like we, it, what it represented in the U S was a form of going against the government in a way because a lot of the American maf- mafia guys started it here because they were sick and tired of being taxed and fucked by the government 
So they said, if the government's corrupted, why don't we fucking do what we, you know, and keep it... Well, when they came over, you know, on the boats, they dealt with a lot of discrimination when they first came to oh, America. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were underpaid, you know, treated like shit, and they, they were... Treated like shit. Them, the Irish, uh, black, they were, they were the backbone of this country at that point. Um, and the Jews. Like yeah, and the Jews, yeah. Construction workers and the fruit market. Put up a lot of those and... a lot of those buildings you see in cities were put up by, you know, Italian Americans as well as a, a lot of other people, but we're talking about them today. So, but was put up by Italian Americans, masons and construction guys and just, you know, we the Italians came here and just, you know, they took anything they could to make a better life, which it was cuz they a lot of them were leaving, you know, a, a, a repressed government in Italy where they did have the mob there before it was in the US where it was formed it wasn't as formed as it got in the US but there was little fractions here and there of people who revolted against the government like Lucky Lowe was saying and they made these little clubs and brotherhoods of just Italian people who lived right. in that area you got guys like Al Capone uh, Lucky Luciano you got you know these people are all that you hear of today I mean yeah. The history still, you know, people are I mean, interested in this. A guy shit. like Lucky Luciano is one of the guys who didn't bring the mob to the US, but really put it where it ended up in later years, which was this glorified, you know, you you you've seen shows like Yeah, like you've seen the Sopranos and you've seen so many mob shows and movies over the years, like for Christ's sake, Joe Pesci and uh Robert De Niro and all these guys made their careers on mob movies. You know, a guy like Al Capone, he was from New York, moved to Chicago, and took over Chicago. I mean, this guy was one of the most reputed killers of all time. Valentine's Day Massacre. He was. The he, was he definitely was. He owned buildings that, you know, there's Lucky Thanks. Luciano, and that guy is the guy who basically formed the five families and because said. Of all the fight. Yeah, because yeah, it was a lot, a lot of shit. On. You got guys like Maya Lansky, who were the, the Jewish guys who helped build the mafia to what it was. Um, these guys were like the pioneers of the underworld, man. You know, um, there's uh, there's Blue Eyes, old Blue Eyes right there, who was very involved with the American Mafia, and that's kind of how he got put on the map, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra was well-connected. Very well-connected, very well-connected. And, you know, like, getting back to John Gotti real quick, you see this photo of him. He, he started out as a street guy, man. This guy was a soldier. He was never, he was, you know, he was never considered to be anything big, but... You know, we all know later on in his life he fucking rose to prominence in the mob. But you know, the 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 mob came over like like Lucky said on a boat to America with with um, a banana boat on a banana boat, yeah. And <laughs> basically, said, my most masculine son, <laughs> my most masculine son, may your firstborn be a masculine one. Um, you know, uh, they they came over in a boat. These people. They were making shit money, doing hard work. They had a brotherhood of people together. Um, there's Travolta right there, as uh, you know, in parts of the movie coming out uh, this Friday, the Gotti movie. He looks um, a lot like him. He does. They yeah, said he, does. he did an unbelievable did role. A good job. Uh, throughout the show, you'll see some paper articles, uh, you know, uh, articles on Gotti and the life he led here in New York. And man, like being a kid, I remember all these. Uh, Daily News and, and, and Post and, and all of them coming out with all John Gotti stuff. It was like it was kind of like a circus with this guy man, you know? And Well think about it, just like any other gang, you know once you get in, there's no getting yeah, out Yeah, there's no getting out, you so, know, not unless you're John, for Gotti's son. not unless you're John Gotti's son, but we'll talk about that later, but anyway yeah. we're talking about, Lucky you, you had said to me off air when we were bullshitting before about the original guy that brought the mob over or was that you, uh, Cuddy Chris? Yeah, I mean, no, it was me. That was you, I mean, yeah. A lot of people say that uh, Marizan, uh, Marizano is the one really who started, you know, the mob. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, like you said, Luciano, after all this fighting with, that was going on through all these families, he came. Well, and Luciano, he the yeah, he basically coined the phrase. Um, the commission. Well, not not only that, but he basically coined. He didn't coin the phrase, but he made people coin the phrase. Um, uh, organized crime because Luciano is the guy who organized it. He's the guy who said, "Yeah, he's the, one who yeah, he's the guy who said, come on, let's let's all get on the same page so we can all do this.'" 
and all watch each other's backs and nobody rat anybody out and as long as we take right. a you know they had an oath you know what i mean they, and they had an actual murder. yeah they actually had a uh, uh an actual you know law a, yeah a mafia law you like, don't call the cops instance, number one i'll tell you that like for instance well, if, if you wanted to whack if you wanted to whack someone out, like that whole idea where you had to go to the top boss or whatever, or, or make a, you know, have a sit down to whack to kill someone. Yeah, see the yep. all started from 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 that. Yeah. From, oh yeah. From, you had to have a sit down. You had to ask. You had to, yeah. especially if you, well, especially if you were going after another made man, you would have to sit down, ask, come up with your reasoning why, and then the boss would tell you, you know, hey, whack him or no, nah, you're not t- doing nothing to him. Um, another wha- another well, you could get out. yeah ma- well made men never whacked each other without going through the boss. Now, That's, what's a made man? Well, now a made That's man is what basically a- what Luciano. He didn't create it. This was a part of the the mafia the mob in America before it became organized. Right. You would take if you were full Italian and they could trace your ancestry back to certain parts of Italy, and they oh, knew man. they knew you were one hundred percent Italian. You would then go for an oath it, once you got accepted into the mob, and they would. Now all you got to do is take an ancestry test. Now, well, yeah, well, that's another thing. And but, you could become mate. Um, well, if you're all but Italian, you got to be. Was blo- it was a blood oath. You had to be all Italian. Blood. You would take the uh, Saint. What's her name? Saint. Uh, Saint Agatha in your hand. It's a card of Saint Agatha or some shit like that, and you would put it in your hand. They would set it on fire. They would cut a piece of your oh, finger so your blood would come out. Right? Yeah. What? What'd you say? I said I saw a part of the Amo- uh, Murta yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in the Sopranos yeah. uh, episode. With you, also, you also saw a part of it in uh, Goodfellas when they were going to make the character that Joe Pesci played. That he was going they in. Whacked him out. Yeah, they whacked him right before he went to go do it. Like, you know, he was about to go in there. But you're right, Lucky. That was a very good part of the Sopranos because it was like one of the first times that they actually showed you what they were really doing when you were, you know, uh, it's like put a into the mob. Honor. Yeah, it is, it, and I'm sure you're gonna see it in this Gotti movie because uh, supposedly Gotti pushed his son into the mob, and they were like, they they knew that Gotti was a crazy fuck because no other guy pushes his kids into the mob. Like, no other mob boss wants that for their kid. Like right. they like they have to go through a lot of them. Once they get to a certain level, tried to go, you know, uh, clean. Tried to put it in investing in businesses and. Uh, if you guys see on the screen right now, that's Travolta next to Gotti. And tell me they don't look alike right there. I mean, it's just fucking amazing what they did to make him look like Gotti. But um, so you would you would go and take that oath and you would become a made man. Now, when you become a made man, you could kill civilians all the fuck you want. Just don't get in trouble. But if you, you wanted to kill another, another made man, yeah, you had to go and you had to ask the boss if you kill another made man. You could kill people who weren't made, who were Italian, who were trying to get made, but if they weren't made, they, so, they had no protection. Yeah, right, soldiers. Like VIP access. Um, so they would, they were definitely different levels of the mob. And once it became organized, it was much more structured in the sense of, you know, there's levels, there's foot soldiers, there's... Uh, you know, uh, cap capos. There's um, bosses, and you know, then you got under bosses. And, yeah, exactly. You got a bunch of different spots, and most of the time, a, a lot of really good uh, mobsters who were good at what they did kept a lot of smart Jewish guys around them. Believe it or not, and yeah, most of what. Well, there's also there's also a ton, a ton of other bosses throughout the history that always had. Like this one Jewish guy who knew the books, who knew, you know, the whole financial side of it, like, and would be, that's why Jews, Jewish people had such a big, plus they lived in the same areas as some of these guys did when they came over. Right, they dealt with discrimination as well. As well, yeah. So well, they, a lot of the New York areas were Jews and Italians. Exactly. That's what it really yep. mostly was. And the New York really was Jewish. And the and Irish came. Yeah. And, the, and when the yeah. Irish were here, they became the cops. Honestly, they, they became the cops. You know, most of the Italians, you know, I'm not saying all of them, became, you know, involved with organized crime. And uh, there you go. <laughs> and some of the best right. fucking movies ever made were made from, you know, that whole mix of... Uh, uh, Goodfellas. He was Irish and Italian. Yeah. Couldn't be made because he wasn't 100%. You know what I mean? You got to be 100%. Are you about Hendry Hill? Hendry. Hendry Hill. You know, Hendry, one day you might fold on the questioning, Hendry. <laughs> you know, Hendry... 
I think one day you might fold on the questioning, Hendry. And Hendry. he did fold. And he did, like a fucking two dollar suit. And that was a, that's a real that's a true story. Yeah, that's a true story. Yeah, Henry Hill really did rat out. Uh, uh, and I love the movie Bronx Tale. I love that fucking movie, and I love that actor. Yeah. Um, the oh, one, uh, the one Chaz the kid. Palmateri? You're yeah, talking about collagenal, collagenal, collagenal. Oh, he's in jail now for real. No, he got out. Is he really? He shot a cop. He got out, dude. Holy he's out. Shit. That guy's out. He's out now? Yeah, he's I out. He got like 25 to life. Or nah, he's out, dude. Time served. You sure? Swear to God, he's out. Last I looked, he was out. You know what I mean? It's a great movie. And yeah, it really it it's it, it is a good movie, and a lot of good movies are made from the whole culture and the whole fucking. Um, but well, you, it's an you know, it's an intriguing culture, you know. It is, and it's like cash the easy way, you know. Like think of it this way: you can go hump your ass five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, like these guys used to work back then, you know, uh, pulling steel up on a fifty-story building that you helped build, dangling off the side of death, and all that shit, or, or. You can go and make a couple of armed robberies or make a couple of fucking, uh, you know. Well, not even that. I mean, uh, a strong arm some people or and make your money and more of it faster. Like, wh- what would you do back then? You know what I mean? I would definitely be a part of that life. To, you know. <laughs> 100%. Me personally, I know I would. Yeah, nobody uh, wants to fucking kill themselves it's different nowadays i mean they have fingerprints and they can oh, get oh yeah i mean like, nowadays I it's Listen, it's the, the, the mob is still around ball game. they're still around but they're just it not is careful about what they do a well, lot yeah they, a lot of a lot of people say they crawled back into where they yep when when when, when they first started it was a very very quiet thing quiet thing exactly. yeah it was you know what I mean? nobody and talked about it you didn't mention no it talked about it yeah, Cer- exactly. yeah certain things were never spoken about between them either like these guys that would be in this together they would never ever talk about it around family around yeah. outsiders um whatever have it like they would never never mention that shit in front of well, family you know or friends it makes sense to think that the government did that on purpose and put Gotti all over the newspapers just to get him to, you know, crack down on the mafia. Well, they were already cracking down because they, well, they already did a lot. They already put a lot of people away. Well, I'm saying like publicizing the mob, like putting it on newspapers. Well, Gotti did that himself. Yeah, they fucking, you know, a lot of, a lot of them walking around in $15,000 suits. Yeah, a lot of the big time uh, mobster guys that like were in the mob for a really long time, those guys hated John Gotti. The older guys hated John Gotti because number one, he clipped a boss, which is considered like fucking taboo. You know, it's it's seriously taboo to go clip a boss. Like that is like, you know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Gotti. People didn't like him, right? That were in the mob, but they fucking feared the shit. Oh, they feared the fuck out of him because when he made that move against Paul Castellano, who. You'll see his photo up here at certain times and also his death photo because they lit this guy up in the fucking street in a steakhouse. In the middle of the street. In the middle of the street. Right in the four head. guys got out of a car with trench coats and 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 those Russian big hat. Russian hats on and they walked right up to him and his bodyguard and they absolutely lit him up. I think they said that um, the old mob boss got eight bullets planted in yeah. him. Um, his driver, who was like, known as a pussy a pussy cat he was a big fucking dude but everybody said you know that this, oh the guy was a sweetheart man like they didn't even need to kill the fucking guy you know like but they they smoked him well, out you're in that life though you know yeah. get in, get in. you live by the sword you die by the sword pretty much yeah. you know and that's, that's the way these that people felt but you know going back to the the original part of where this all took place um after luciano and those guys when they formed the mob in the early like what was it like 1900s it was around 1860 well no no i mean luciano oh in america yeah that was about yeah, like he was in the early 1900s. yeah 1900s. Right, 1900s. 1900s you know right after him ushered in a even sicker demented more like mafia got demented it, it was killing by the by the thousands man and you usher in a new era right and the new era was in the face of al capone 
And when that guy, Al Capone, when he took over and he came from New York, he lived in New York where he was just a foot soldier. He could never do anything right over here. He was never catching on with the mob over here, which he knew people like Luciano. He knew all those guys. You know, he knew all them. He dealt with them at one point in his life, a couple of points. Touchables. Um, he got stabbed in the face and got in a lot of trouble here in New York and he really couldn't make it. So what he did was he packed up his shit, packed up his family, Went and he Chicago. moved to fucking Chicago. And for him, that shit. for him, it was the best movie ever made because a year later, the guy owned like four restaurants, an apartment building. And he was a huge liquor bootlegger. Too. Yeah, and, and he was the, the king nation. of Chicago and he was the king of liquor. And he also, yeah, pulled off the Valentine's Day Massacre, which was one of the most deadliest fucking days in mob history. Um, people came in disguised as cops. And they yeah. got all these vi- uh, rival gang members, ga- uh, you know, mafia members up against the wall and told them to turn around where they took their Tommy gun and they all of them at once on Valentine's Day. We got a good question in the chat. Connor asked, is there still a mafia presence in New York? Listen, or is it kind of dead now? It, listen, it's it's you could consider it dead now, but it's not because... I it's think. Stronger than I ever. think. Well, I don't know. It's not stronger than ever. No, There's no way about that. It's 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 more it's, secret. it's quieter than it ever was. Probably at until. I mean, it's probably as quiet as it's ever been since it first came to America. Right, because it's not like walking around killing people. Because if listen to this, if you go on Wikipedia stuff. right now, right, and you go on to Wikipedia and you look up who is this five this five families, okay. And if you go look up who is the boss of these five families and you look up the names and you look up who it is, Wikipedia has guys in there right now listed as the, the bosses of these five families that are still alive, that are either in jail or out free right now. Yeah. And Wikipedia lists their names. So Yeah, there was that, there's that one guy from Jersey too. I, uh, that's or, another or, reason uh, why if you're in the mob, you want it quiet now because... Wikipedia will fucking list you as being a mob boss. So it's kind of fucking hard nowadays to really do what some of these guys did back then. Being in jail doesn't stop these people. No, it doesn't. But these guys back then only had to worry about being bugged and tapped like somebody gets into their apartment and puts a bug in there. But now, in the day of cell phones and cameras, and like it's it's very hard to be in the mob nowadays. It's kind of like where you you can't really discuss anything anywhere. Right, big brother. Yeah. Is Cameras listening, everywhere. you know, and the mob don't have no technology like that and is covering themselves with shit like that. So, you know, what it is today, I really don't know. I I know it exists, but I don't know to the extent of, you know, how really organized it is and, you know, what's being done. I don't I think... I feel sorry for, um, you know, Gravano, for the, the daughter, Karen, that was on Mob Wives on VH1. Because she deals with a lot of shit because of what her father did. Yeah, right. well, I mean, her father was a monster. You know? Now her father, Sammy the Bull, he's, you know, pretty much a rat and yeah, got yeah. Gotti arrested in the first yep. place. He, he he went against Gotti and it shocked the fucking... It, I mean, it shouldn't have come as a shock, but it shocked these guys like Sammy the Bull because Sammy the Bull was known for being like this great businessman had his hands out. like if you went to a club somewhere in Florida you'd be like oh Sammy owns a part of this bar He's Sammy owns it I mean, too. and he was Gotti's right hand man you know he, well, he was the underboss yeah guy. he was Gotti's right hand man he knew yeah. everything that Gotti was doing you know that's yeah, why he was fight. that's why he made him. such a great you know rat you know yeah, um, a huge dent in everything I mean it fucked a lot of stuff up it did it, put, it basically put an end and it didn't end at that point, but it basically put an end to the glorified American mafia where it was glorified. That was the last of it being glorified was when John Gotti left it. That's when it stopped being glorified. Well, but he never it, left it when he went to jail. Well, when John Gotti left, you know, left being the mob boss, it was over. It died with him. There was nobody after him that people were like, oh, my God, look, that's the new boss. That's the Look at these guys walking around with their suits and they don't give a fuck if, you know, it, that put an end to it right there, man. Once Gotti went bye-bye, that was it. It's kind of like the mob in America died with him, even though we all know it's not over, but and it still exists in some facets, but that was the end of it right there. You know what I mean? That was basically, you didn't see anything glorified after that. 
you know, I don't know if you ever will again in this country because of the way that it is now with technology and all that. Like, it's so easy to infiltrate and, you know, arrest if everybody. Anything, they and, got smarter. Well, I mean, yeah, they got smarter in the sense of they know not to fucking, you know, say anything now. And they can't say anything anywhere. You know what I mean? It's it's almost impossible. Where are these guys going to go nowadays to talk? And you know what I mean? It's like almost impossible. Well, they you still know? have, I, I know for a fact, and I'm not trying to sound like a tough guy, but I know that they have social clubs. And of course they, they, they do. They're still, they're still around. Yes, but it's but not like it used to be, no man. One, no one's out killing no one. If, no. No. if anyone in the chat's thinking that, no, no one's getting whacked out anymore. But yes, they have their hands in certain things still, and they still make a living doing doing crime life and having you know legal activities and shit. But they're just it's just not like it used to be. Yeah, it's definitely not. I think they realized like after Gotti, they were probably like fucking whoa, you know things got a little out of hand there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's yeah, like right, like let's yeah. There yeah, still there still is, and and you go look it up on the internet. There still is the five families. They're still all active. Yeah. But you yeah, know they don't know what, and and they there's still are mob people being arrested every fucking day in this country, so the mob is still here. It's just not what it used to be, and it's not as poignant and as out there as it once was. It's not as glorified anymore. It's kind of gone on a hiatus. Which, like you said, Lo, it's probably the best thing for them, you know, in the future is to, you know. Not talk about it no more. I mean, right. after after John Gotti, it, it, that was you know that was like a wake up call for the whole mob and like because they just shit got out of hand. You like know, the point is to to stand up against the government and you know take what you want type of mentality. So like that's how they live. Well, Their no, lifestyle well, it is. Wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't. They never listen. It was never like fuck the government. No, it's like it, yeah, it was though. though. They hated the government. Was they hated the live government by, though. Live by if you have a problem. You don't go to the police. Yeah, you don't, you don't go, call the cops. You, you you deal with it yourself. You deal with it with your family. Yeah. Family meant not only just your immediate family, but when you Marcosa were married. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. It's, that, that, so it wasn't like they were sitting there, fuck the government. You know what I mean? No, but, but they were. They were. They fucking could not stand well, yeah, the no, government. They didn't pay their taxes half the time. Yeah, no, they never pay their but, fucking taxes. You know, that's the last I don't thing think they did. That's what they had in mind. That, what they had in mind was just like, this is our lifestyle from back home, and this is how we want to live here. You know, and then you got American born Italians like Gotti and shit that, again, I think just brought it to a ridiculous. Well, you got to le- think about it too. They had cops on the payroll. Oh, you know, they had a, well, like. They had everything on the payroll. Right. Bro. When you have government on people the on the payroll, I mean, that's yeah. when things start to get messy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And when the feds went after them, they went after them hard. Hard. Yeah, hard. Well, that's when that whole Rico thing they applied. Well, a lot not of that not Rico only that shit. is they really look fucking stupid it's when like what happened to Sopranos when Gotti beat them about fucking four times in a row, three times in a row. They look yeah. so fucking bad. They they just they couldn't afford to look bad anymore. So they fixed the fix was in on that last uh, on that last case that well, Gotti caught. For Gravano, he he probably would have never even got put away until another fucking fifteen years. He he probably could have. If Gravano never testified or whatever, I bet you Gotti could have went another 10, 15 years, no problem. Definitely. Yeah. He would have went into the fucking two thousands. I'm telling you right now, he he would have kept it still alive. Once well, I gone, mean, he he died what in uh, 04. So I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, yeah, I think you're right. I'd agree with that, man. He probably definitely would have, uh, you know. He died but, in 02. He died in 02. Okay, I was going to say, I think it was 02. Yeah, oh, was it 02? Died, okay. He died in jail in 02. Yeah. Um, but still, nonetheless, you know, you got to also question, too. Did he really get the, you know, medical? I mean, you're in jail. How much, you know, medical attention are you getting? They didn't want to give him attention. Uh, obviously, yeah. They wanted yeah. him to die. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, you know, uh, there's, well, I explained what was that the whole thing that you told me about the body. Ken? Well, that's what I was gonna just say. That's funny. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, you know, like when when Gotti died, um, he, uh, you know, the, the 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 family had asked for certain things when he was gonna die because they knew he was dying and all that shit. Um, he was really sick at the end of it. So if you go see the movie, and I don't want to give away too much shit that's gonna be in the movie, um, and I'm sure this part will be at the end there. But, um, you know, when Gotti died... They don't know he's dead already. So yeah, well, no, but, like... but they, you know, they don't know what they did to him. I mean, it was so fucking disrespectful. It was just... But when Gotti died, the uh, the 
government, you know, had his body or whatever because he was in a government jail for the last years of his life. And um, this, one of the sons, the Gotti sons, went over to uh, see the body of their father and everything. And they went to the, um, the, the funeral parlor where the father's body was after they took him out of jail because he died in jail. Um, number one, it was at the wrong funeral parlor. It was like some funeral parlor that the government picked. And they all knew that this whole place was bugged and had shit all over it because they thought they were going to have the funeral services there. But when his other son comes into the room to go view his father's body, he says that they had his father in the coffin and they had him in a fucking cheap government issued suit and they had him like propped up with like this fucking stupid makeup on his face and his hair, which was like all fucked up, like, you know, complete disrespect to them. And when the son got there, he flipped the fuck out and was like, I want my father moved. This is not where he's going to be and blah, blah, blah. And the government was like, no, nah, this is where he's going to stay. And they also had his hands cuffed. Okay? This guy was cuffed in the coffin. In the casket. And, yeah, the in the coffin. Head? And they were like, and the son was like, like why the f- he going to go? You know, he screamed. He's like, oh, why do you got my father fucking cuffed? And the guy was like, well, you know. And he's like, no, what is he going to fucking escape from jail? He's fucking dead. Like, he's are dead. you kidding me? You know, and it was a really big fucking fucked up thing that... You know, it was, it was, they knew what it meant to Italians, especially, you know, that Italian, um, to be, you know, handcuffed in the fucking coffin because well, when you die, you're free. Serious. Yeah, and you want to know something? When you die, you're free. And he said to his family, I do want to die because I want to be free. I don't want to be in this fucking jail no more. And this is the only way out is if I fucking die. And then I'm free. And then these motherfuckers can't get me. And he actually said that to his kids. He's like, and then these motherfuckers can't get me no more. And they heard every word he said because they were right there listening when he said it. Because it goes back to what a part that's in the movie that I don't want to give away, but John Gotti's son comes to him before he dies and wants out. He doesn't want to be the same man his father he doesn't is. Want to live that life. And he figures that out like years into him being in the in the you know the family already. I mean, but anyway. Um, and you have that whole story, and I don't want to give too much away if you're going to see the movie, like I said. But um, they totally disrespected the family. They handcuffed the man in the coffin because they knew that he said all that shit about being free, and they can't get me then. And he said it to his son, like, and, never, and he even like flaunted about it, like, when I'm dead, you can't fucking touch me, you know? Like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Then there's nothing you can do about it, type of thing. And they had. Other thoughts. They had other thoughts on that. The government was like, you know what? Fuck you. We're gonna slap some cuffs on your ass while you're in there. Well, he was a hard man to uh, get locked up, so that was the problem. Yeah, that's why they hated him. Yep, they did, man. They They, treated him like they really did. You know, it was a shame what they did at the end there, but and the family took big time offense to it, obviously, and uh, they had you know Gotti moved and brought to the place where he was supposed to go and. They had him dressed up in his suit. He was he got to wear his suit for the last time. They said that like, well, that's good. You know, he got dressed up in his best suit that he had, and uh, you know that was it, man. Uh, the last mob oh, boss, nice. like the last, you know, storied history in the mafia, the American mafia, which has been around for a very long time, and I that that was part of the reason why our um, FBI was formed, and a lot of these. You know, agencies and law that were formed because of the mob. Because at first they were bootleggers and they couldn't be stopped. There was so many of them. It was fucking. You know, it was like they were. You know, it was big time bootlegging and. Well, they were just as smart. Yeah, as, they, they controlled uh, everything know, at one point. Agency. They were. That's yeah. You're right. And they had as many men, Very loyal smart. men, and you know that whole thing. So you know, it's it's. And talk about Al Capone, like we told him before. He, they say that his net worth in today's oh yeah uh, money He'd be up there. is around one point four billion dollars. Wow, billion, billion, yeah. Wow. Billion. Oh, they shit. say at one point he was responsible for like I don't know fucking seventy percent of the alcohol I, in this fucking. I think country. Yeah. he was only worth like ten mil. Uh, he was up there. No, I think he was worth. Yeah, let me tell you, man, bootlegging. Was well, you got to remember though. Look, that's the thing yeah. that started the mob bootlegging. That's yeah, what boot, actually started it, man. When they did the whole, uh, you know, uh, what, what was that called, Ken? With the, without the alcohol? Prohibition, prohibition. Prohibition, yeah. When they did Prohibition, the mob t- 
took over on that shit. Yeah, dude. It was like the they government. A huge it was like the government gave them a new industry. They were like, here you go. Here's a new industry yeah. for you guys. <laughs> you go. You know? Take all of the alcohol sales and then in you the get United speakeasies. States. You get a ton of speakeasies opening where they're selling yes. fucking yeah. alcohol and they're, you know, and they're making a killing selling all this alcohol. Then you got the guys who are making the alcohol and they're coming in from from the south. They're stepping on grapes. Then you had the guys who, yeah. <laughs> then you had the guys who fucking would put it in their cars and fly to the U.S. With you know, not fly to the U.S., but fly to New York and fly to Boston and like in their cars, like drive fast and fucking try to outrun the cops. And these guys were, you know, and these were Italian people who were paying for the stuff to be brought there, and it turned into this fucking industry of just illegal everything, you know. Al Capone paid, but it was before drugs. Al, yes, yeah. Al Capone actually. Uh, beefed up all of his like you know cronies cars there you know yep, yep. to knowing that he actually bought a police car and made his cars faster they used to so hang that, off the back yep. of fucking tommy guns yeah but they they actually had upgrades and like the, the the police couldn't even afford to make their cars as fast as the cars that al capone had which is just crazy. Every yeah, time. yeah, they would outrun the fucking cop cars, man. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, they actually had like you know, and whatever, 10 yeah, they would just they like would that. jump into the cars that were fucking like souped up, and they would literally hit the fucking pedal and not stop. Yeah, because they knew if they could outrun the cops, they'd be fine. All they got to do is get to Jersey or to the New York border, and they'd have a drop, and boom, you know, they make the drop. They don't have anything in their cars at that point. Nothing. And they get to drive around. And, and you know what? These bootleggers made a ton of money. And then the people who bought who bought the fucking uh, the hooch, who bought all that, brought them to these speakeasy underground bars in New York City and in Boston and in any city during that era, you would find a shit ton of speakeasies that some of the cops would know about. And some of them would be there after work fucking drinking. Um, and that's the way it was, man. You know, once they, they, once they legalized alcohol in this country the door opened for the mob and that's when the mob got rich that's when it was a great time for the mob they were, they were just basically bringing water they brought water they bought water and made so much money like off of basically water you know well, hopefully um, he embraces this role Travolta and you know I've, I've seen movies that flop like the one with Vin Diesel when he played uh, you know a mafia guy yeah with the Chasey family yeah that was a horrible yeah, movie you can't compare that right now. well yeah, this is this is actually going to be the second time they made this movie the Scotty movie the first one yeah, yeah. was with um, another like Angelo something or yeah right. and and he's not even Italian this guy who played him in the first one well, um, that one was pretty good though I'm it was a good that. movie I liked yeah. it I thought it was good but I don't think it's going to be anything compared to what uh, was done with Travolta because they said that Travolta pulled the fucking Jim Carrey on this one. He went all in. He they said that his wardrobe and the way he dresses changed after this movie. He dresses in fucking John Gotti like clothing now. <laughs> this guy he wears these fucking suits now and goes around like that now. It's him. But John John Gotti Jr. and and uh, other people of the family gave Travolta a ton of shit. Yep, a ton of shit. And whatever didn't fit him, yeah, they, they replicated exactly. Yeah. To to you know, to that. Oh yeah, no. They, I, I read that he wore his old suits yeah. in the yeah, movie. Like, there was some stuff though that didn't fit him. Yeah. That they recreated, but yeah, like eighty percent of the movie is actually <laughs> Fuck. John Gotti's crazy, fucking man. suits. That is crazy. Oh, Travolta shit. in the closet. Oh, they gave him fucking. Well, there's boxes. there's rumors of that. Yeah. I mean, there's rumors that I don't yeah, give. I a f something you know what? I don't even care. Him. I don't even care, man. The guy is just a great actor. I think Travolta's one of the. He's an American guys. fucking. He's an American like you know, uh, great American actor. I mean, dude, come on, you know, like do, I don't even care. This guy could do a mob movie. This guy could do a fucking musical. Well, look, he was he was a fat mother. He was a fat mother. Like, look at this guy. He was a fat mother in that movie. Fucking, uh, he played a fat female yeah, yeah. in fucking uh, 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 hairspray. He's good in face the off fucking movie him. Hairspray. Yeah, face off. He's in the movie Hairspray as a fat fucking yeah. mother, a woman, as a woman. I wow. mean, this guy's versatile. I didn't know that. You know? Well, yeah, he, you didn't know he was in I Hairspray? About him. They, they, he considers himself a method actor, a, uh, you know, where they can change. You yes, know, and, and that's that's why I was saying that, like, he pulled it, he pulled a Jim Carrey, because he was like, they said he stayed in character the whole time. He was walking around the set going, 
hey, I don't like the uh, director. Huh? And I think we need to kill him. <laughs> nah, I mean, but they did say that he was in character the whole time. And Travolta's like, Travolta's a creepy dude. Would you let him watch your kids? Uh, uh, no, I think so. nope. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't no, let anyone. Watch I wouldn't let Travolta watch my kids. No way, because whack I think Travolta he has. Listen, he's a Scientologist. All right, I don't trust Scientologists anyway. Right. All right, so that's number one. Number two, I don't give a fuck if he sucks dick. I don't care if he's a Scientologist. I don't care what the fuck he did in his past, or in his present, or in the future. He's a great actor, and that's what I like him for. Nothing else. I don't like him for who he is. I like him for what, how he is on. You know, in movies, and he's a great method actor. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think I think he's going to do a hell of a job as John Gotti. And I think that this movie is going to be really big for him. You know, kind of will be like a re a rebirth for him in a way. You know. Right. At first, I I did think that Pacino and uh, Pesci were going to be in a movie, but <laughs> yeah, funny Chris corrected me. <laughs> and uh, you know, it would have been nice to see them actually be in the movie though no but like you said that other movie coming out the irishman or whatever that that's that's right they're working on a new netflix movie yeah that was worked around that i didn't know but it's about jimmy hoffa being whacked out and he was very heavily involved with the mob uh, yeah jimmy Jimmy hoffa was yeah that was the leader of the team it'll be another great movie yeah well that was a good movie with um with um what's his name what's his name uh anything scorsese does (sighs) fuck his name The movie that he was in with uh, Hoffa, who played Hoffa, that was with, um, what's his face, who played the Joker. Uh... Oh, uh, uh, they already had a Hoffa movie. Yeah, yeah what's his face? Oh, oh yes, Sunday boy. Oh, shit. You couldn't get the pudding pop with the Clara Farm in it. You take the Clara Farm with the pudding pop. Ah, my son, <laughs> the pudding Clara Farm pop. Ah, <laughs> oh, my God, that is a demented. You're from New York. Are you part of the mafia? And if so, what is your position in the mafia? Plus, don't whack me. Um, yes, I'm in the mob, and Don um, Corleone. And we're gonna whack you. My position you. is, uh, I played a fat ice man. That's great, Casey. Yeah, I played a fat yeah, ice man. I I Hoffa take a played by uh, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. That's what I meant. Yeah, he played the original in the Hoffa movie. Uh, it was yeah. a great movie. He played a good part it as was. Hoffa. Yeah. It's shiny. They show him get whacked at the end there, and it's like you know he fucking literally, um, he literally um takes like a fucking a well he at the end there it's really rumored like if they don't that really know how he yeah they don't really know that that was the real ending like so to say. Um, so it's a lot of speculation on Hoffa. They never found a body. They never, you know what I mean? So it's like, no matter what you do, you really don't know what, what exactly, you know, if that was true or not. Like anything having to do with that is even remotely true at the end of these movies and shit. So, um, there is, uh, uh, did you, did you see though, uh, the ice, remember the ice man, the, the, that fucking murderer for the mob? Yeah. Yep. They he admitted he said that he killed him, put him in a fifty five gallon drum and dropped him off. Yeah, the I heard of that. Yeah, I, I heard of that, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. So I mean whether it's credible or not, I mean the guy's in life prison as it is, so he could just be, you know, stirring the pot, but I'm who knows? Why didn't sentence him to death? Well, the death penalty I don't think is it's I don't think they not, have one. It's not available anymore. Yeah, what he is there? Only two, people. There's only two states I think now in the US that have the death penalty. I don't know. It is slim, though. Is that what it is now? I think it's only two states. I don't know if anyone in the chat can correct me. I'm not going to look yeah, it up. What I, states? It's only two states that have the death penalty I now? I think it's two states. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah. That's crazy. But, yeah, he admitted to whacking out Jimmy Hoffa. Um, but who knows? Yeah, know? but, then, but then they never found a body, though. So it's like... No, they never found the body. They yeah. say that he fucking... Put him in a 55 gallon drum. <laughs> he probably chopped him in pieces. <laughs> yeah. He, well, no, he said that. He said he chopped him in pieces. There were two. That was it. There were two 55 gallon drums, filled them with cement, dropped them off in a boat in the middle right, of the. Right, you're not finding that. No, you're not finding it. You're not finding it. Well, no, 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 definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not finding it. Scuba divers and shit. I mean, if yeah, if they did that to him, he's gone. There was a rumor that he was in Giant Stadium for years. He was buried in the end zone area of Giant Stadium. Which Florida they, and Texas. They, I don't. They Pope built. Island says Florida and Texas. I don't think Florida though. 
I they, think Texas no, no, is I right. think he is right. No, no, I remember seeing something recently about Florida. I think he's correct. They and built. York, uh, you're right, Chad. New York does technically still have it, but they haven't used it in decades. They went and built a uh, giant stadium the same, almost the same exact time that they that Hoffa died or uh, was taken. You know, was went missing. So yeah, a lot of people, that, yeah, a lot of people thought that he was buried in the end zone at Giant Stadium <laughs> for the longest time. So, Can I mean, you imagine though they, they yeah, but when they when they stadium? yeah, but when they knocked down Giant Stadium, obviously there was you know there was no remains there that they saw. So, Can um, you imagine though if they did, God man, could you imagine the graveyard? Could you imagine they actually like found his body and like confirmed? Yeah, he really Imagine was like Giant Stadium. Yeah, but listen, now, but wait, 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 wait. Imagine they turned around and said, "No, we do, we did confirm it when we knocked down Giant Stadium that it definitely is Jimmy Hoffa. We confirmed it through DNA, right?" And they turned around and told you, "Yes, he has been buried there for the last forty years." Now that you confirmed it, you know that every fucking game that's ever been played there, all the fucking touchdowns, all the times they rumored about him being buried in the end zone, he was there the whole fucking time. It was his spirit. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, Phoenix dude? says in the chat, death penalty was legal in 31 states. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, two states? What are you All talking right, well, about? Let me, I'll, I'll refrain. I'll re-say what I said. Yeah, it may be legal, but there's only two states that have implemented it in the last, whatever, decade or something. The, the other states that, like like Chad said. Oh, they haven't given him the, the death penalty. Right, they haven't, yeah, yeah I got you. shock you with the fucking helmet. I got gotcha. you. No, 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 no. That that hasn't happened since. That's the barbaric. It's <laughs> that, fucking barbaric. They've been injecting, you know, people for many right, years. They put you to sleep. Yeah, yeah. You don't really know anything, but the, no, there still is people on death row, but uh, you know, in certain states. But I know a lot of states don't use it. Yeah. They think it's too it's, heinous of a of a. I mean, if you if you killed multiple people, I mean. Yeah, if you're a mass no, murderer, I mean, that's an exception. The, the punishment should fit the crime, right? Right. Yeah, they gotta, start, they gotta start rocking people again. Start to throw rocks at people. They're stoning them. <laughs> stoning them. <laughs> start stoning people. Jesus, man. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think any mobster has ever been put to uh, to death, like death penalty. I don't think that's ever happened where they've honestly been put to like, you know. What mobsters? Yeah, like certain mobsters have no, been put yeah, to, you know, so. death or whatever. It's like when you saw that in the movie Goodfellas when they're in the jail and they have their own little room all together and they're making Oh, yeah, yeah. And- Back then it was, you know, it was uh, if you went to jail, you didn't rat anybody out. You served your time. You shut your mouth. And right, when you get hooked up. Yeah, and then when you got out, they took, care, they took care of your family while you were in there. And when you got out, you had a job waiting for you. You had money waiting for you. You know, it was a different time, you know. Now, One it's hand washes the other. a little bit different now, man. You know? It's a different world. It is. And, you know, like we said, the, the you know. A lot of feminism. Fucking, the way that it was one day looked at oh, and how, yes, oh, hold on one second. Boy. You're good to get the pudding pop with the <laughs> Clara Jesus. You take the chloroform with the chloroform. The sun in his loves the pudding chloroform. The pudding, the chloroform, the pudding. Jimmy Hoffa was buried at the old Giants Stadium but moved to the new MetLife Stadium. Yes. He, they moved him to the new MetLife. You're right. He's there now. And uh, he's still getting touchdowns for the New York Giants. You know? Yeah, pro violence. Uh, Iceman was a Polish hitman. He wasn't in the mob. He just killed people. Yeah, but no, he did contract. He did contract oh, he's killings. Joking, you fuck. He did. Yeah, he did contract killings for the mob, and he yeah. was. Uh, he was one fucking. Uh, he was one fucked up individual. Sick and twisted. Yeah, he was one fucked up individual. This guy, man. He. Right, he I was telling Chris earlier. I said I watched the interview, and they said, "Like, do you feel any remorse? You know, are you sorry for what you've done no. to these people?" He didn't give a fuck. He didn't even care. Yeah, he I killed think he a lot of shoulders. people. He shrugged his shoulders. I think in the interview, like, nah. <laughs> He Sick. killed a lot of fucking people, man, that guy. They don't actually know the full number. He he only, I think he, I don't know how many murders he got put away for, but it's not the real number. Yeah, no, it's not. He he admitted to a lot of other murders that they couldn't find the bodies or they didn't know exactly where he was talking about. 
Um, right back then, talk was cheap. Yeah, that that number is very high with that guy. He's one of the biggest hitmen in in the history of Tomorrow. any organized crime or any hitmen. You know, in the, in America, he's fucking up there. <laughs> you fuck with the wrong guy, you get Iceman coming in. Yeah, I highly recommend to go check out his documentaries on HBO because they're they're just fucking haunting the way you look into his eyes and like what you're thinking yeah. he's thinking is no joke this guy you know i remember him telling a story about one guy that he went to go kill and he busted into his apartment and he had the guy and he was going to kill him but then he thought to himself you know what this guy kept pleading pleading and pleading and he's praying to god and praying to god as he's putting a gun in his face ready to kill him and he goes you know what just once i said you know what i'm going to give you 20 minutes to go pray in that room and you go ask your precious god to save you and if God sees fit and something happens or I get struck by a bolt of lightning or the cops come or you escape, he goes, then he, he answered your, uh, your command. So I'm going to give you 20 minutes to go pray to your God. And if anything happens within those 20 minutes, you're going to live. If something doesn't and your God doesn't answer for you, well, then I'm your God and I'm going to take your life. So the guy fucking got, went into the next room. Powerful. And he sat in the next room praying and trying to, you know, obviously thinking like, oh my God, please, like, like I got to get, please, please save me, do something. And the 20 minutes were up and the guy went into the room and he looked the guy in the face and he was like, you know, uh, it's, that's it, man, you're done. And he's like, no, please, just don't do this to me, please, please, please. And he said, he put the gun in his mouth and he fucking pulled the trigger and shot him right through the fucking head. Damn. And that was it. You know, and that's how that's how this fucking that, that dude was. He had no mercy. He had no fucking. And then he went home to his they beautiful no wife and beautiful kids. And yeah, they had no fucking idea at all, at he all. He also said in the interview that he fucking killed uh, like I think three or four people that were in a van that just passed him on the highway one night. That he got pissed off, so he flagged them down, got out of his car, and killed all four of them. Wow. Yeah, I heard about that too, man. I he did. shot him in the head, left him there, and <laughs> see you later. I heard about that. Like, you got to be a stone cold fucking killer to just do because right, the, wi the wives you. know to some degree. I mean, they live a certain I, lifestyle, of course, of course. so they have to know. Yeah, but I, I forget what his front was, but his wife thought he was like some type of fucking, I don't even know what, a salesman or something or whatever. Yeah. She really had no idea that this dude killed, you know, whatever, hundreds of people. Wow. Jesus Which is crazy. Man. How do you hide that? You know what I mean? How do you hide that type it's a double of double life? It that's crazy though to me. You know, like Yeah, like how you I could imagine yeah. killing people and then hey honey, what's the deal? I know, I know. <laughs> and and they said that he went home and lived such lived a normal life. life and like, you know, everything was great and you know. Fucking crazy, man! It really is just insane. What, what are you laughing over? I'm laughing because Billy Ricky wrote, "God damn, that one dude's nose." <laughs> oh, yeah, that one dude's <laughs> nose is like a fucking ski well, lift, that's, bro. That's Carlo Cambino. He would have yeah. fucking whacked you out. Yeah, you looked at his so nose. He used to whack people out for looking at his nose. You looked at his nose. Like long even long. if you just looked at the at his nose, he'd be like this. He'd be like this to you. You go, or out of nowhere, he'd be like, "Oh, you looking at my nose?" And then Billy Ricky would be like, Ah, hell no, man. I ain't looking at your nose, man. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I seen you looking at it from across the room over there. Looking at my fucking nose. You got something to fucking say about my nose? Uh, nah, man. I ain't got nothing to say. It just looked like a fucking ski lift to me, man. You motherfucker, you. Fight words. You cocksucking fuck you. Hey, man. Ain't my fault you got a good cocaine nose, fucker. <laughs> yeah, that one guy's got a fucking hooky. Um, yeah, man. Oh, shit. I just had this shit drop out. Are we lagging right now? No, right? No, I think we're no. good. All right, we're good. We're good. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, that's the way that uh, it went, man. It was glorified when you had guys like Al Capone and, you know, Luciano and uh, all these guys who fucking never lived it up. And, and, and it came... All to a head in the 80s with fucking uh, the Teflon Don who flaunted his money, flaunted who he was, you know, didn't give a fuck. He, he lived it and up, this, you know. This guy walked around in fucking $15,000 suits with $100,000 Rolexes. On yeah, man, he wrist. didn't give a fuck, dude. He didn't he care who knew. Life. He, didn't he give was a fuck. really living a life. He didn't care who knew. 
He didn't care who speculated. He didn't give a shit. When they asked John Gotti's wife what her husband did for a living, she said, provides. Even Gotti's daughter is feared. And she didn't even do anything. Well, she was feared all in high school, too. Like, like, because people were just like, you know, a fucking deathly afraid of her. Like, you know, let me put it to you this way. Gotti had a son. It was his youngest son. When the kid got on his bike, 10 years old one day, went outside on his bike, went across the street, went down the block, got hit by one of the neighbors and got killed. And Gotti and his wife were fucking devastated by it. The neighbor fucking was never was seen never again. again. Was never found again. Was <laughs> never yeah, seen the again. Was, yeah. was gone. The neighbor was My never age. seen again. Gone for forever. Like, he went and fucking had the neighbor killed. Yeah, well, yeah, well when you're in that life, he hit that the wrong kid. Like, if you just think about that, it's a little fucked up, man. You know, it's like, this guy obviously didn't mean to fucking, you know, kill this kid, but uh, it, it happened, yeah, and... And now that guy was fucking never found. That guy had an accident. Yeah, that guy had a bad accident, and he's never seen again. He's probably upstate New York somewhere fucking, you know, a bag of bones by this point, you know? Right. Uh, But, yeah, that's what happened, man. You fucked with one of these guys back then, and you were were done. There was just no questions about it. You didn't even see it coming, you know? It was two to the back of the head, and you're gone. Yeah, especially if you were just a civilian. Oh, yeah. At least if you were in it, you knew, like, oh, you had the vibe of, like, oh, man, yeah, they're going to whack me. You know, you're yeah. a civilian. You just don't know shit. You know, you catch one in the back of the head out of nowhere. You don't even know you got killed. You know, it's a little like fucking what's his name? Um, uh, the guy that that got he killed to take over the mob, fucking Castellano. Oh, Paul Castellano. Paul Castellano was not a street guy. He was not from the street. That's why Gotti. That's why Gotti didn't like him. Gotti Gotti surrounded himself with people who were street guys. He didn't like right. the rich business he used to be guys. A street and and Castellano was 100% businessman first. He was all business. Gotti fucking hated that. That's why when Gotti killed Castellano, he not only became the boss of that family, the Genovese family, but he became the biggest boss in the mob. He ran the whole entire mob. And I'm talking all five families. He was right, the Don. America. He was the guy at that point. He... With that, when he killed Castellano, he took over the commission. He, because everybody's afraid of him at that point. Even other mob guys were afraid, deathly afraid of him. At that point, everybody was like, "Holy fuck!" This guy took over the whole fucking thing. He was a foot soldier ten years before, fifteen years before. This guy rose up to become the Wayne Gretzky of the mob. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like he was a phenom. This guy came out of nowhere and fucking was a street guy, a foot soldier. You're talking Paul Castellano was a businessman. He made millions of dollars for his family and other families. That's why he became a boss, because he well, made well, money. He was in, Carlo Gambino's bro- brother-in-law. Yes, but but he was a very smart fucking businessman, savvy. He used to invest all the mob's money in the businesses yeah. all around and wanted to make the Genovese crime family a reputable family that had legitimate bid- businesses throughout the world. Right. And he, that's what he was going for. And Gotti just came up and said, ah, you know what? You're not going to go through with those plans because you're dead. Well, because you know? he was so La Cosa Nostra. Yeah, and the you guys know, loved like, him. By the book, they, Delacroix they not only, been, yeah, well, yeah, he should have been. You'll see in that movie without giving too much of it away, but Delacroix was John Gotti's groomer. Groom Gotti, you know, taught him everything he knew. He passed away from cancer. Yeah, and he was a street guy too himself, Delacroix. And he was so. Gambino's underboss. Yeah. And how it works is the underboss, when the boss dies, the underboss goes and fucking, you know, so Gotti took it as a spit in the face when they fucking, you know, when he gave it to uh, this guy who wasn't even on the street. Yeah, and so. The fucking business owner. The and, businessman. I mean, he was a crooked one, but he was a businessman. Yeah, and then he took it over and, uh, you know, it, the guys did not only fear him, but they loved him. Like, they thought he was... You know, because he was flamboyant and he was everything that every mob guy wanted to be. That's what he was. He, he exemplified, like, being a boss. And so when he took over, the the other five families were so deathly afraid of this guy that everybody basically said, Don Corleone, you're the Don, man. You, you kiss the, We'll kiss your ring. You're in charge now of the whole thing. So for that little bit of time, from when he went to jail and he killed Castellano, the next day after he killed Castellano, man, people showed up to his uh, his uh, meeting 
you know, place over in Queens, and there was a line around the block to kiss his hand, like to fucking go in there and pay respects to John Gotti. And it was like something that's never been seen before in the world of, you know, organized crime. Like this guy clipped the boss and everybody went with it. Like there was a lot of people who, who thought that they, like some people weren't going to go with it. They were going to revolt against him. And there was a, um, there was a attempt on his life, a couple of them, after he killed Castellano. Other people tried to kill him. You know, you know, Tommy could have been in the mob with that fedora that he has on. I don't know, no suit. Tommy. Anyway, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he 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 did have attempts on his life after that. John Gotti. Uh, other people tried to kill him too. Well, his so, friend died from that car bomb. Yeah, exactly. His friend died from it, and um, you know, he uh, he basically. Um, he didn't get killed. He got lucky, man. You know, he got really lucky in the sense that he was able to dodge, you know, all that shit. He beat three cases, and they were starting to call him the Teflon Don. He can't get fucked with, and he used to flaunt it too. He used to brag about beating the beating the government. Go look up these videos on YouTube, guys, on on John Gotti, and like there's there's like recordings of him that, that um are like real candid recordings of him in interviews, which takes you into the world of who John Gotti really was, man, which are, it's some crazy shit, but, uh, yeah, it's about all the time we got for tonight, guys, um, I don't thank you guys for coming and chilling out, and, uh, Mr. Lucky Low, and, uh, Cuddy yeah, Chris, wait to see the movie. yeah, the movie comes out this Friday, go check it out, uh, John Travolta as John Gotti, and, uh, it should be a good one, guys, and, uh, thanks to everybody out there who came and checked it out tonight. This was uh, Foul Play. We'll be back in two weeks uh, with a regular episode of Foul Play. That's right. And uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, this Saturday on Insomniac. Ciao. Peace out, Ciao everybody. Bella. Ciao, Bella. This was a Foul Play special on the American Mafia and the one and only John Gotti. Check out the John Gotti movie this Friday at theaters near you. Che fa a fangula vese le zorda, tutte goze a fangula de mamma. Stata zitta a fangula de vese le zorda. Piece of garbage, you piece of fucking love. Stino a ciaggiungella. A vangula vese la zorda, a puttana in tilla, a vangula da mamma.